a couple weeks ago I told you guys that I had a dream of using a 55 inch 8K television as my only computer monitor. I really wanted to use it as four 4K monitors all in one seamless screen. Well, I couldn't resist. I went out and bought a television and honestly, this is better than I ever thought it would be. It's still not perfect and I've learned a ton. Let me tell you all about it. For those of you who don't know, I currently live in Puerto Rico, which makes sometimes finding very specialized technology stuff a little bit more difficult. I went over to Best Buy to see what was available. First of all, as far as I can tell, there are currently no 8K televisions available anywhere in the world that are smaller than 65 inches. Samsung did make some 55 inch variants a year or two ago, but those are off the market now and they're becoming more and more difficult to find. Just one week ago, Samsung was actually selling these TVs direct to customers for just $1,000. I reached out to Samsung today and I said, I want one of these TVs. And they said, sorry, we're already sold out. I've checked eBay, they do exist there, but nobody will ship to Puerto Rico. So I found a very knowledgeable Best Buy employee who knew all about the newest TVs. And I tried to explain to him what I wanted to do. And the first thing that he tried to argue with me about was that I don't need 8K. There's no way I can possibly see the extra resolution. 4K is gonna look the exact same. I'd be better to spend my money on a higher quality 4K screen. And he told me that the best television to use as a monitor is LG's C3 line. What's really cool about this line of TVs, one, it's OLED. It has a massive following online of other computer users that are using this TV as a monitor, and it comes in a range of sizes. Probably the most popular size is the 42 inch. They also have a 48 inch and a 55 inch. This is the 55 inch TV. So I told him, okay, this TV does look pretty awesome. I'll buy this and I'll also buy the 8K Samsung at 65 inches and I'll return whichever one doesn't work. And of course, because we live in Puerto Rico, the 8K version wasn't available. He was going to have to special order it. And I said, okay, let me just try the LG first and see if this is even feasible. And then I'll come back and buy the 8K if it is. So let me first just say that this TV looks amazing. The picture quality, the color, the contrast ratio on the screen is unbelievable. And when I made my last video, so many people warned me about using a TV as a monitor. There's all these problems with dithering and local dimming, and you're going to be able to see all these artifacts. I'm telling you guys, the image quality out of this screen is better than my Dell 4K monitors. This is absolutely beautiful. Like almost every TV, when you take this right out of the box, the colors are a little bit too wacky, too vibrant and everything. But if you put it into cinema mode and go into the menu and basically just turn everything off, the image quality on this screen is probably the best I've ever seen. I am really blown away. Now, when it comes to resolution, can I see the pixels? Yes, yes I can. I, uh, I'm sitting relatively close to this TV. It still looks great. I don't think the average person would ever be able to tell, but being that I use dual 4K monitors every single day of my life, I can absolutely tell this is much lower resolution. Let's talk a little bit more about screen size here. Obviously, the larger the screen, the further away you're going to have to sit from it so that you can comfortably see all of the edges. This is a 55 inch screen sitting on a very deep desk. This is a three, three and a half foot desk and I have this thing pushed all the way back. And uh, this is absolutely reaching the maximum comfort level of my vision here. It's not that I can't see the edges, I can see the edges fine. It's just that the distance from my eyes to the center of the screen versus the edge of the screen is significantly longer. So when you're using the edge of the screen, everything's kind of at a slant. It's going off into the distance and it's not nearly as comfortable to use as multiple monitors that you can tilt towards you so that if you're looking at one individual monitor, it's perfectly flat in front of your vision. Now I would say this desk is much deeper than the average person's desk and therefore, I don't think the average person is going to be able to make a 55 inch work unless they have a second desk to put it on behind their front desk or they wanna mount this on the wall and pull their desk off the wall. That could work. The other issue is that this is an absolutely giant TV at 55 inches. And so those eight megapixels that you have on a 4K screen are being stretched out and they're larger than they would be on a smaller screen. So if you went out and got a 42 inch or a 48 inch version of this, the pixel density is going to be much tighter. It's going to look even better. And honestly, although I wish this was 8K, 
the 4K does look better than I thought it would. It really is impressive. And then of course that leads me to the issue of the current smallest 8K TVs, which are 65 inches. You know, we've got an additional 10 inches here that I have to deal with. I literally could not see the edges comfortably at all on that TV. So I've come up with all these different ideas about buying separate pieces of furniture to put it on. I can't easily screw it to the wall where my other desk is. So I would have to jump through a lot of hoops to make it work. Now I'm not saying I'm unwilling to try, but it's just a lot easier if you have a TV that actually fits whatever desk you currently own. Now, one of my biggest worries about using a TV of this size as my sole monitor was the fact that Apple puts their menu bar at the very upper left of the entire screen. So instead of windows where the menu bar follows each individual window around the screen, it's always stuck to the upper left corner on Mac OS. So anytime you need to go up there, it's quite annoying, especially if you have something in the bottom right of your screen that you're working on, you have to go all the way up here and get to that. I have realized after working on this screen for a few days now that I don't use the menu bar as often as I thought I did. And there are some applications currently available that allow you to right click on the top of any application window and it will bring up that menu bar wherever you happen to be navigating. I personally haven't even felt the need to install that software because I haven't been using the menu bar very much. However, I do find that I use a bunch of stuff in the upper right hand corner up here, especially looking at the time. I never realized how often I'm looking at the time in the upper right of my screen all the time throughout the day. And that's very annoying. If I have something down here in the bottom left that I'm working on, and I just want to quickly look at the date or the time looking way up here at this little bitty number is incredibly annoying, but there's an application for that. I think this app is just called clock. It's totally free. And if you can see it down here, it just adds the clock anywhere on the screen that you want. And you can't click on it or anything like that, but um, when you mouse over it, if there's something important underneath it, you can click through it. So it's not going to interact with whatever you have on the screen. And when I'm using this giant monitor, this has been a huge help for me. I find it much more convenient to look at that than those little bitty numbers way up there. Now, in my last video, I was very clear that I had no desire to use this TV as one large monitor. It's almost impossible to look at this entire thing unless I back way up. I want to use this as multiple smaller monitors. And in the past, I was using an application called Mosaic, and it allows you to easily snap different applications to different portions of the screen. But I realized that this screen was so big and I wanted so many different shapes of applications on this screen that I needed another application. So I found this app called Divi, D-I-V-V-Y, and this app is fantastic for giving you a lot more fine control over where you want your applications to be on the screen. Let me show you how this works really quick. Right now I have everything set up the way I want it, but let's say you have the screen right in the middle here and you want it to fill up the space in the bottom. I have a shortcut set to control shift A and it's just going to pull up this application here. And you can see as I move my mouse, it will show me where I'm going to put this application and I can click and drag and fill up that space perfectly. And it's going to snap over just to that location. I've got WhatsApp open in the upper left up here. I can bring this application up and let's say I want to fill up this bottom quadrant right down here like that. That's awesome. This app also allows you to create custom shortcuts where you create the zones and you could say, you know, when I hit control shift one, I want it to fill up just this small portion in the upper left. And when I hit control shift five, it's going to fill up this larger area in the bottom right. After days of playing with this, I have found that I actually prefer much taller, larger screens on the bottom here. These are kind of my main screens. And then I have these smaller supplementary screens on top here. So it allows me to work down here. Right now I've got Adobe Premiere filling the entire bottom of this, but it's, it's bigger than half of the screen, which is super cool. And then I have my finder windows up here. So if I just want to grab files and drag them down here into Adobe Premiere, it makes it so much faster than having to drag it down to the dock, wait for the dock to open, drag it to Premiere, wait for Premiere to open, drag it over here, wait for it to select this quadrant over here, then I can finally let go. It's so much faster just to have the finder open and drag those files directly from the finder into the timeline. Now, one thing that I hate about Mac OS 
is that when you have multiple instances of one application open, there will still only be one icon down in the dock down here. So I have two different windows with Google Chrome open. Each one has a ton of different tabs, but two different windows. I would like for it to have two different Chrome tabs down here, because if I just wanna open one of those, I could click on the one that I wanna open, but with Mac OS, you have to click on this icon and both are going to open. And I find that very annoying, especially when I'm trying to do very specific tasks. Maybe I want Photoshop open down here and I want just this Chrome window open over here, but I have to open both and then I have to minimize one of them, which is super annoying. And then if you guys have ever used it before, it's like hidden forever. You'll totally forget that it's in there. And when I click on this icon again, it won't come back. And if you don't remember to look for it, you have to right click on it and then find it right in here. There it is. So it's just such a stupid system. And I actually told an app developer my idea to fix the dock and he claims that he can do it. So we are currently working on an application that's going to help save the navigation in Mac OS as well as make navigating with multiple monitors far better. So I will definitely keep you in the loop on that. We'll see if he can actually pull it off. But the cool thing about having a monitor this big is that you can have the majority of your applications all showing on the screen at the exact same time. So you're not having to swipe through and navigate and find them as much as you used to when you were working on a much smaller screen. Now, I think I spent around $1,300 on this TV and I am telling you the image quality off the screen makes that an absolute steal. Now, Apple's studio display is 27 inches, it's 5K, it's $1,600. I'm sure it's got slightly better color accuracy, blah, 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 blah. But I'm telling you guys, the color quality out of this monitor is unbelievable, especially for the price. But if you get a smaller version of this TV, which I highly recommend, get the 42 or the 48, you might spend less than $1,000 on this TV. And at that price, I'm telling you, this is clearly better than any other monitor I have used. It's just amazing. So you're probably wondering, is this good enough for me to give up my multi 4K monitor setup? And the answer is, it is very close, but no, it's not quite there. The image quality on the screen is literally better than my Dell monitors, which uh, absolutely shocked me. The resolution, honestly, it still does bother me a bit. I really wish this was 8K. The biggest issue that I have with this, even more than the resolution, is just how flat and large this screen is and the fact that the edges are further away from me than the center of the screen. I'm so used to my 4K monitors being tilted towards me so that when I look at each one, I'm looking directly at the center of the screen and the edges of the exact same distance to my eyes. I've gotten used to this by using it for a couple of days, but I just went back and used my 4K monitors for a second and I was like, oh, okay. It does feel like I have totally separate independent desktops whereas this does kind of just feel like one giant monitor. Instead of using this TV like individual monitors, like I'm very happy to do with my normal monitors, this TV makes me wanna put whatever I'm working on right in the center because that's what I'm looking at, that's what's most comfortable to see. But if I do that, then that kind of defeats the entire purpose of having all of this real estate. You know, I wanna have all of my windows open at once. So basically this TV is amazing. And if it had the same picture quality and it was 8K resolution, I'd probably get over the fact that I couldn't tilt each side towards me. But right now, I think I'm going to return this TV and go back to my normal monitors, but I'm going to keep an eye out for that perfect 8K television. If I can find a 55 inch variant, I'm going to be incredibly excited to check that out. There's a couple of things I'm worried about. First of all, image quality is not going to be as good. This is an OLED TV, so each individual pixel is producing its own light. That's going to create the better colors, the better dynamic range, also the better viewing angles. The viewing angles on this TV is like perfect. But when you move over to the 8K televisions, they're the QLED or they're lit from behind and you can see a difference. I could definitely tell a difference when I was at Best Buy. The image quality on this screen is no doubt better. So I'm wondering, is the image quality on the 8K television good enough and the resolution will make it worth it? I don't know, I'm going to keep looking. They did actually have an OLED version of this TV in 8K at my Best Buy, but it was over $10,000, and I believe the smallest size was 77 inches, which is way too big for my space, so that's definitely not going to work. One thing I have considered though, even though 65 inches is too big to comfortably use, 
I don't have to use the entire screen, right? I mean, I have tons of extra pixels. I could just shrink each one of these screens into the center and I could make the screen as large or as small as I want it to be. So there are options. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I am so glad I went out and bought this TV. I have learned a ton about this and this TV has absolutely blown my mind. If you're looking for a gigantic monitor, I cannot recommend this TV enough. The image quality blows my mind. Sadly, I'm going to be returning it, but I am not giving up. I'm going to be keeping an eye out for the perfect 8K variant. And I'll also keep you guys updated on the app that we're trying to build to fix the horrible navigation in Mac OS. Stay tuned. Are you a photographer? Well, we're doing a huge portrait photography contest right now. The winner is actually going to get Tamron's updated version of their 70 to 180 millimeter 2.8 lens. This lens is absolutely incredible with my Sony cameras, but if you happen to shoot Nikon or Canon, you can choose that mount as well. Second place is going to get the world's most advanced Thunderbolt dock by Ivanki. And third place is going to win a free tutorial from the F-Stopper store. You can check out this contest at fstoppers.com contest right now.